People, if I'm going to be back home filming some of these reviews, then I got to do it the old-fashioned way by reviewing a Pierre Kirby action film. A lot's changed in the 16 years since I've started the show. Different walls in the background, less hair on my head, more hair on my face, lost a little weight here and there. Switched up the glasses a time or two, got at least one different camera, so now it's only a little dated. But some things remain the same. Caligula poster in the background, or well, uh, usually. It, it is right here, though, and uh, somewhere up there is uh, Caligula the Untold Story. And what else has remained the same? I'm still taking some time out to talk Pierre Kirby movies directed by Godfrey Ho. Yes, Pierre was the original official movie star of the cinema snob. He's fought zombies versus ninjas, untouchable ninjas, full metal ninjas, and gigantic serpents with some badass moves and lines. <laughs> he don't look so tough to me. Don't judge a book by its cover. Right? Someone is gonna get kicked to death at the end. <laughs> what a useless guy. Indeed, they are all useless guys when facing off against Pierre Kirby. Have we come to the end of the road in the Pierre Kirby filmography after spotlighting his nine films? Maybe? I've thought before I'd seen all of his movies, but then I'd discover a new one. So who knows? Maybe there are still some lost ones out there. All of these were released between 88 and 89, so I don't even know which was made first. For all I know, Crackdown Mission was the first of his to be made. Yes, Crackdown Mission. That's what I'll call it since that's the title I first saw it under. Although it's more commonly referred to as Fury and Red, or American Commando 5 Fury and Red, Crackdown Mission was a German release DVD, and that's why it took me so long to review it, since for a while, it was only available in a German dub. Special thanks to MD the Dude from Patreon for sending me a copy. And I need to understand all of these lines. These people don't deserve mercy. Remember, you're Lucifer's child. Oh yes, I don't even need to see this film to know it'll have a decent amount of material, especially with it opening with the classic IFD Films logo. <laughs> Yes, Godfrey Ho movies are my Star Wars movies, and Columbia Pictures movies too, I guess. Don't forget the stock shots of the city with the names attached. I know it's you, Godfrey. I'm not calling you Charles Lee. And it's the reteaming of Pierre and Edouard Burzma after their iconic roles as Ted Fast and Solomon in Thunder of the Gigantic Serpent. Ted Fast? I can see why they'd call it American Commando 5. Pierre Kirby isn't American, and this is also not America, and there's no commando in the film. In fact, I think they're just spying on someone's room. I joke, but the first scene we see is hard banging. Hey, do you mind trying to look at the copyright date here? I can't show it, but for as much hair as on this man's head, there's more on her armpits. This goes on so long they say their prayers and go to bed. Time for that post-sex cigarette, where we're also going to compare our facial hair. Ah, the classic pretending to be poisoned by cigarette routine before he gets the hell out of there. She's actually part of a satanic cult where she killed him as a human sacrifice, then took her own life. A Pierre Kirby movie about a devil-worshipping cult? I am so in! Take this back to the lab. And be careful with it. Yes, sir. This movie can't afford a lab! Detective Neil Brown has a lot to work with, such as the rookie, inexperienced Paul. This is the third case where the killer's been a woman. Yeah, there's Slater's case, and what's her name? Yeah, you should know this, officer, especially a case this weird. Looks like the work of a serial murderer. Only in this case, the murderers are all killed. It's weird. Right? There's not even a giant snake or a zombie ninja. Also, I love the not-subtle way Paul is just breaking down everything for the audience. 
You mean it might be the work of some fanatic cult manipulating these women? Officer Paul Exposition is right to sum everything up before the, hmm, I wonder cutaway. I wonder who the next killer victim will be. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder. Um, find out next time on Crackdown Mission? Yes, like most Godfrey movies, it is a cut-and-paste film, with the other footage being from a 1982 film from Taiwan called Girl with a Gun. More on that later, as you can tell when the Godfrey footage comes in. You mean this early 80s Taiwanese film isn't shot at the same time as what looks like a fraternity prank where the Alpha Betas are gonna get those nerds who think they can show up wanting to join? With this blade, I mark your presence. Huh, it's true. That new Dungeons & Dragons film is better than the original one. Now to drink from the ceremonial Clamato juice. We'll have some small talk before it kicks in. Preslo, did you read yesterday's paper? Yes, I did. I didn't understand the new Garfield. Then again, lasagna was never my favorite dish. This looks like our nation's Little League coaches have come together to worship Satan. Whatever helps the team. I think we should give it a rest for a while. And why is that, Oliver? Can we finish this up fast? My bowling league is getting together in 30 minutes to finalize our paperwork before the season begins. So they're actually a group of doctors sacrificing their patients, and they get the idea that instead of brainwashing many people, why not just one? Here, here's a picture of Audrey, you know, from the early 80s movie we're edited into. Oliver here is so good at exposition, he could be a cop. She's a mute. And because of that, she feels belittled. She can't express herself, so all her angers and frustrations just remain inside of her, just waiting to explode. Way to break doctor-patient confidentiality, asshole! Basically, everything bad that happens to her is because the cult set it up. Oh yeah, sure, this guy looks like he hangs out with this air supply cover band. What this movie actually is, is a remake of Abel Ferrara's Miss 45, a movie where a mute girl is attacked twice in the same day, gets the rapist's gun, then goes on a vigilante, man-hating rampage. And it was my favorite movie of 1981. This one here, it's the exact same movie, right down to the character being mute. Kudos to the IFD team for taking a near scene-by-scene -scene Miss 45 remake and figuring out how to incorporate it into another movie about cops and a devil-worshipping cult. But like Miss 45, the girl with the gun footage is well shot in that you can feel the grit and grime coming off the screen. Like in that film, it has good uses of slow motion, too. Like this scene where Audrey bashes the guy's head in with an iron. Honestly, I get so into watching the Miss 45 remake footage that I keep forgetting, oh right, soon enough it'll cut back to this extremely 80s cop movie with a mustache cult. But meanwhile, in this 70s commercial about unions, it's back to being a cop movie now. Yes, I always start out my day being very introspective before we get into the details of this case. This is the latest report on the three murder cases. There's one element that's very interesting. They all went to the same psychologists. Yeah, that's it. I love these two. I found something interesting. Wow, they're all doctors. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Dialogue. Watch what happens when he brushes the guy off. You want me to go with you? No, not this time. Okay. We will never have the friendship that you want, Paul. Anyway, thousands of miles away, Audrey is gonna get her ass to church before going into a room that just looks like the headless corpse of a lady of the night will turn up. And when we come back, uh-oh, the movie's getting graphic. Best flip it over into shot on VHS in camera effects vision while she stores the rapist's body parts in the fridge. They come from beyond the grave to take their revenge, and no one can stop them. Zombie rival, the Super Master. Don't miss it. Coming soon to your screen. We're back, and okay, seriously, was this a way to get the movie by censors? Like the modern equivalent of turning blood in a movie trailer black? Even the jump scares with the dead intruders showing up in the mirror is kept in from Miss 45. 
Yes, this is all part of our plan. We knew she would kill the intruder, take his gun, chop up his body, and go on a kill-crazy rampage. Speaking of, it's time Detective Neil Brown meets with the others so they can go over their fantasy baseball picks. Some of this is shot like it isn't an interrogation scene in a movie, but like a murdered girl is being spotlighted on Unsolved Mysteries, and this is one of her best friends being interviewed. Good thing they aren't being suspicious, like playing with this letter opener with a look that says, you'll never take us alive, officer. Don't worry, even this scene has some fabulously awkward lines. By the way, of what religion are you? I'm an atheist. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Just curious. Pierre Kirby was the original 80s action hero to then start doing Pierre Flicks movies about an evil atheist. Even when he asks about the logo, it's awkward. <laughs> Never seen it before. Uh, yeah, maybe flip it over and look at the side the image is on, ass. Oliver is officially the sidekick Officer Paul of the group. He's getting too close. We must stop him. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Right, boss, another genius plan. We must stop him indeed. A beautiful strategy. I don't know which part of the story I like more, the hilarious cult stuff, or Audrey dropping off body parts while dodging roaming gangs of martial arts fighters and their 80s gang fire barrels. Gotta be someone around here to kill. Ah, this stranger enjoying his morning cup of motor oil. I'm sure his death will appease Lucifer or something. One thing it does have in common with the other footage. Hey! Hey, hey, sweetheart! <laughs> The dubbing is about the same. It makes it so much weirder. Here, take your bag, okay? This is your. Uh, take your bag. This is yours, right? Oh, oh. That guy had it coming on the grounds he was clearly up to no good with that voice. Oh, I guess we have other cops investigating this case, too. Inspector, maybe we should check in with Detective Neil Brown and his investigation about devil worshipping psychiatrists. What? Who in the hell is Neil Brown? I'll get him on the phone. The murder of that drunk and the finding of the dismembered body parts could be related to another three cases I'm working on. Thanks, fellow officer, and totally in the same movie with us. And how does this footage have more padding than the actual cut and paste footage? Okay, can we get Officer Paul in here to tell us what you're reading? But back to, um, I would say the main character, but does any Godfrey Ho movie really have a main character? There's a jackpot in the trash today, though. Ooh, vintage can of Pepsi. I could put that on eBay. And the severed arm from the New York Ripper? I'm gonna be rich! Still, it's all going according to plan. Set up this girl to become a vigilante killer, get more cops involved with the case, to where it even hits the newspapers. Then, when Neil Brown reads the paper, that's when we strike. Sword-wielding hitmen obviously hired by the team of evil psychiatrists. It's coming together now, and I can do another badass one-liner. Come on. I don't need a knife to take you. Take it! No! What if he takes a hostage? Uh, stay back! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> that problem worked itself out. Wow, thank you very much. You're much more competent than my usual partner, Total Stranger. Anyway, in a less charming meet cute Now, you listen. I won't be telling you again. Go fuck yourself! This happy couple is going through a rough patch. If he keeps going to random tables and saying, Daddy's home, surely one of them will bite. You never know what drunk off his ass creep you'll find at this, uh, Shakey's Pizza. At least it's not one of those sleazy old country buffet gangs. It is a redo of the scene from Miss 45 where she's approached by a photographer who's totally legit. I could help you a lot. Your pictures would appear in magazines throughout Southeast Asia. You'd be famous. Or at the least you can be in the background on one of the hidden image puzzles and highlights. Now let's get you all camera ready. I'll fix you a drink. <laughs> Sorry, her contract specifically states she's to be on the cover of Guns and Ammo instead. I don't know where this clumsy ass is going, but if they give him enough time, I'm sure he'd trip and fall into that crossbow somehow. And what in God's name is Pierre wearing? My nephew bought me this shirt. It really hurts his feelings when I don't wear it. 
Even Officer Paul is wearing a shirt where if he gets shot with an arrow, the blood will just blend in. This looks like two dads fighting over who gets to rent the last copy of The Big Chill. And why are there tires there? And what academy did these two cops go to? Shit, I wanted to question him. Sorry, man, I don't shoot so well when I'm wounded. Right, when he gets wounded, there's no stopping his body count. The editing gets even more hilarious where they're trying to make it believable she's doing all of this under the spell of the cult. Kill. Kill. Makes sense, he's showing up to hypnotize her in a mirror, apparently. Where she doesn't even acknowledge this because she wasn't actually looking at him. Best visit the refrigerator to take the spare body parts to the party. She's so cold as ice, she doesn't even react to Zool clearly living inside her fridge. This pales in comparison to the janitor at the bowling alley. Now I just want a remake of Driller Killer that incorporates a plot about a giant monster. See, what did I tell you? There's only one place to find that cult that's been tormenting her. Definitely the bowling alley. They would keep their scripture in a shoe locker. No one will find it here. Toss the key away. The body parts will never smell as bad as the player's used socks. Now that that's out of the way, no, what are you doing? You just got rid of some body parts. Why add more? She's doing the right thing by protecting the one subway car not being watched over by Paul Kersey shooting hoodlums through the newspaper. Some of it is less like the Miss 45 universe and more like one of the Death Wish sequels or Exterminator 2. I'm surprised they're not on roller skates. Perhaps if officers Neil and Paul weren't busy shopping for more sweaters at Montgomery Ward, they could stop all of these crimes from happening. Like this scene, which starts like she's gonna kill this gang, and then it turns into a turf war. You're on our territory. We'll teach you a lesson. <laughs> okay, did she just interrupt West Side Story or the climax to The Outsiders already in progress? Now that we've chased off that random distraction, we can get back to the Miss 45 slow motion and the scene where she shoots the gang members surrounding her. <laughs> How is this pleasing Satan? Wouldn't he want more rapists on the streets? And is this what 90% of this city is? <laughs> Hi there. Hey, Miss, can I give you a ride? Seems legit. <laughs> he ain't the only one she's taking down. Lady, oh. In fairness, the odds are good that the driver was also a vile intruder. And seriously, get that light in your refrigerator fixed. It looks like she's gonna be defeated at the end with swift radiation poisoning. Someone nearby can help dispose of more body parts. Hey, hey, I'm hungry over here! Sure, you can chop up dead bodies, but just use the black light so I don't know what I'm eating. And don't shine that thing on me! You think I want radiation poisoning too? It's bad enough I'm eating a spleen. And yes, my spirit lives on in every movie cat. The good news is Neil finally made it to the Crockett and Tubbs store instead of the Danny Tanner store. The bad news, he forgot Paul had been shot. Do you know her whereabouts? Yeah? Thanks. Oh, oh sorry. Ah, oh, it's okay. Let's go. <laughs> In a perfect world, these two would have spawned a franchise like Riggs and Murtaugh. But just when you think you're in for some more padding, like her doing a roll call of the gang members, it somehow still turns into a fight scene at the precinct. They're playing good cop, bad cop, with good cop at least sharing his cigarette. Neil, however, is badass cop, here to meet with the psychiatrist, still embarrassingly shopping at the Danny Tanner store. Oh shit, Bob Saget's packing. I gotta give it to the Godfrey footage. There is still some good and fast-paced fight scenes in them, even if the characters look like managers at an Eisner's, who, yes, worship Satan. When you win with Lucifer, you can never die. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stupid bat. Right, dumbass? The best Godfrey movies are the ones where both movie plots are fun to watch. Thunder of the Gigantic Serpent is like that. And then there's ones where the Godfrey footage is fun, but the movie comes to a grinding halt when the other footage is boring, like Ninja Untouchables, honestly. This one, however, no. It's one where all of it works in the entertainment department. <sighs> Women are such bitches. These sleazeball characters aren't even trying to survive. Let me tell you about myself. Maybe you'll pity me. 
Well, maybe this guy is. I guess you can live, what with your wife cheating on you and all. Well, she was having an affair. But the thing that really shocked me was my wife's lover wasn't a man. It was a woman. Yes, let's make this plot sexy and prime material for Cinemax. Just kidding, I spliced that footage together. This footage, however... Sorry to bother you, Mr. Tam, but I believe Audrey Lung works for you. I told you on the phone that Audrey is a worker here. They are totally in the same place and in the same year. I've seen so many of these Godfrey movies where they edit together a conversation from two movies, but this is the first where the Godfrey actor has to act opposite someone who's mute. Do you know of a Dr. Oliver or a Dr. Breslow? <sighs> Obviously, I'm not getting through. All right, thanks for your time. Seamless. Whoa, I see a nun. Are we gonna go the full Miss 45? Find out when we come back. Ninja of the Magnificent. An evil ninja grabs for the power and he'll let no one stand in his way. Coming soon to your dream. We're back and she's not in a nun costume, but in a major twist, it turns out the one in the nun costume was either the cop undercover or this guy just tried robbing an ass-kicking nun. Either makes sense. Okay, she's the cop. So it's the Warriors if Mercedes Rule was dressed as a nun. Where Neil still shows up. This is Night Fox. Go ahead. Over. I want you to call up Audrey Lung's landlady and have her check out Audrey's apartment. How did he know she was going to be there? I guess working in the cop undercover as a nun is one way to still keep in a nun costume. Plus the party climax for Miss 45, except it isn't a costume party this time around. Yet the party still seems sinister. Come on in. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Mistake, mistake, mistake. Who knows, it might not even turn into a mass murder sequence. Perhaps the conclusion will be all the problems are solved by dancing the night away. This looks like the kind of party where Jeff from Rocket's Ear Decision would show up and point out all the sin in the song lyrics. Why not? Everyone here is a caricature. The color white stands for purity, doesn't it? Ah. Why does everyone in this movie speak rapelish? That's a lot of words for, yes, it does have the party-killing spree sequence from Miss 45. Yes, yes, I know what these cops think of the crime scene in her apartment, but where's Pierre Kirby to kick the shit out of the ninja doorman? Or the cult villains, who again look like they're trying too hard to connect with their kids about their phony love for He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And where did they get that picture? That cutaway was only there to make it look like they're again influencing her to kill all of these partiers. As if there already isn't enough context for why she's doing what she's doing. And it's more or less shot the same way as the Abel Ferrara movie, or trying to be at least. Audrey! American Commando 5. Still very disappointed they didn't find a way to edit Pierre Kirby into the scene where I guess she's killed? I don't know. It cuts away from it so we can get to the conclusion of the satanic cult versus Pierre plot. Anyone who defies Lucifer will be punished. Quit fooling, you're both Methodists! Ah, uh, just as we suspected, he's here for his camping trip. Thank God I'm not wearing something that stands out. It helps that their masks make them unable to see there is no one in the vehicle, yet they keep shooting anyway. If you're wondering where Officer Paul is, I don't know, maybe he's the one speeding up the camera footage. Crap, shoulda worn green, shoulda worn green! Anyways, remember a gigantic serpent when they stole the line from Sudden Impact? Go on, shoot. Make my day, punk. Well, this one's completely different. All right. Kind of makes it interesting, Breslow. Did I fire five or six? They rip off the first Dirty Harry instead. That is, if Harry flipped over Scorpio, was wrong about his bullet count, and instead punched him off a cliff that isn't too high. Why did you leave? Why is it over? You know he probably survived that and is now free to hypnotize someone in an I Spit on Your Grave remake. Well, that was a fun Pierre movie to go out on. With Gigantic Serpent being his best, this one is right up there too. 
because the Miss 45 remake movie is surprisingly decent, and the Godfrey Ho footage is hilarious as usual, and kinda original with this batshit plot they used to insert into the other movie. Pierre Kirby's time in film history may have been brief, and in a perfect world, he'd still be with us kicking ass today. But it's truly the internet using its powers for good in giving this man the respect he deserves. Thanks for watching, folks. Be sure to subscribe to us today and click the notification bell, and we'll see you next time. This place helps me think. It's so peaceful and quiet here.